Michael Kazin. I'm uh, editor of Dissent Magazine, and I teach history at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. The uh, relationship of the left to President Obama is a complicated one. In 2008, really for the first time since the 1930s, um, almost everyone who considered themselves to be on the left, whether radical left, liberal left, moderate left, socialist, non-socialist left, uh, supported Obama. It was uh, very much a sort of popular front of the left behind Obama. Of course, most of those people believed that Obama was still going to be a Democrat, that he was not going to be a, a radical left-wing figure, but they had hopes that perhaps he could be pushed in that direction. Well, a lot of those people who supported Obama also supported him much more half-heartedly in 2012, but they've been very disappointed, clearly, with uh, his policies, uh, even policies that uh, have moved in a progressive direction, like the Affordable Care Act. Uh, people on the left wanted universal health care, they wanted single payer, they wanted a system more like that in France or uh, Great Britain, um, social democratic countries, uh, if you will, uh, on the European continent. But one thing that I think has been interesting about Obama's administration is the way in which it's brought back one of the oldest, perhaps the oldest, um, issue of uh, the left historically in this country and, and elsewhere in the world as well, which is economic inequality. And the, uh, the, the Great Recession had a big impact on this, of course, but I think so did the ways in which Obama talked during his 2009 campaign and also continues to talk uh, in sort of economic left-wing populist uh, terms about uh, inequality, about uh, even 1% versus 99%, uh, quoting some of Theodore Roosevelt's more progressive speeches on those issues. Um, and so there's a dynamic that is a play here, which similarly happened with John F. Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson in the 60s, similar with uh, Franklin Roosevelt uh, in the 1930s and 1940s as well, which is that when a liberal is in power, or some perceived by most Americans to be liberal is in power, like Obama, like Johnson, like Kennedy, like FDR, uh, the left uh, buys into that uh, presidency for a while at least, uh, gives it critical support, if you will, but then tries to uh, carry out some of the more progressive promises of those presidents, which the presidents, for all kinds of reasons, either don't want to carry out or cannot carry out for structural uh, reasons. So I think you see that happening with, uh, with Black by Wall Street, you see it happening with the, the boom um, of support for Elizabeth Warren, you see it happen with Bill de Blasio's campaign for mayor in New York City. Um, in many ways, the disappointment of people on the left with Obama has also generated a, uh, I think, a, a very healthy um, uh, efflorescence of, of economic uh, progressivism, economic uh, populism, economic leftism, uh, if you will. The more and more young people uh, that I know, at least, are interested in the labor movement. Again, something that seemed to be dead uh, for a lot of young people for, for many, many years. So, so I think this has been one of the interesting um, elements about the relationship of the left to the Obama administration, and one which, as I said, has echoes in American history. Okay, great.